So we're at a guest place down from Greg's house where we just were and um, he has a few Bigfoot encounters. So tell me about what you saw right here. Well, I, seen, I, I was probably 14 and I come out the house and I seen a cat run up over the hill. So I was like, well, I'll go get a uh, light. Well, mm -hmm. I went and got a light and come back out here and a Bigfoot was laying on the side of the road or the hill here, mm -hmm. pushed off. And then I was like, oh, it scared me so bad that I went in the house and told everybody. So it was laying on its belly? Yeah, on this hill? its belly. Okay, and the house is right over here. I'm not yeah. gonna film it. But um, can you describe the features? What did the face look like? It looked like a orangutan. Orangutan? Face, yeah. Okay, and so it it's kind of like all flat. women's features. Yeah, and it was like a red color? Yeah, color? red and brown, yeah. Red and brown, okay. But what do you think it was doing? It was watching? I don't know. I, Mom throws food out here on, along this hill at hmm. nighttime for cats or whatever. And I think maybe it just come up to eat. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like it was watching you guys. Yeah. Maybe you guys have walked past it a couple times and had no idea it was yeah. there. It seemed like it was comfortable. What did the eyes look like? Were they big and white? Were they yeah, black? Yeah, they're black. Black? Yeah. Almond shaped or round? Round. Round? Okay. Yeah. And um, you said it was probably about six foot tall? Yeah, about six foot. Okay. Well, that's pretty strange. Definitely. Um, what else have you seen? I've seen a lot of stuff around here, like like rocks stacked on my porch and stuff. And okay, like so they left rocks. Stuff. Yeah. Did you ever keep the rocks or no, toss them uh -huh. back? You said they threw a rock at the jeep. Yeah, you can film the jeep if you want. Okay. But it's got a. Just the other day, we was coming around the corner and a rock hit the jeep, chipped it out. Okay. I don't know if you can see it real well, but. Let's see, right in there. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And there's no way that somebody was out that dark late at night, you know. Pretty big rock, though? Yeah, pretty good one. If I wasn't going past, it would have probably busted the window out. Okay, yeah. All right. Oh, God. What else have you seen? Any other encounters have you seen? Uh, when I was kids, like, we'd stay in tents you know mm -hmm. and they'd come shake the tent at night time mm -hmm. scare us kids half to death you know but i've yeah. heard women talking you know like i was telling you kind of like a hyena so you've heard the hyena line. yeah yeah we talked and it was about real close to me and i it's some kind of language i couldn't understand so like a but hyena like, laughing yeah, laughing something? yeah oh that's weird Yeah, a woman's voice. Like one time when I was, I was raining real hard, I come out on my porch. I live over there, you know. Mm -hmm. And I come out on my porch and I heard a woman crying mm -hmm. for a long time. And I'd, I'd done hoops and hollers at her and she just kept coming and crying. I don't know if she got hurt or what, but. Yeah. I've heard the weird woman language behind my house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah strange. stuff's real though. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. What did the rocks look like that they left? Were they uh, big? Just flat ones. Were they smooth? Yeah. Real smooth? Okay. Yeah, there's lots of weird stuff that happens around here at nighttime. Mm -hmm. It's more focused in the summer. You need to come out here in the summertime yeah. to camp or something. What time of month was it when that orangutan? In the was? summertime. Like June, July? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with me. Oh, yeah, man. They rode on for you. It's in the seated row. You know? Yeah, they like cedar trees. So there's a lot of activity up this way? Oh, yeah. Big old septic sewer, like a uh, sinkhole, but here we tried filling up before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. something about sinkholes. Yeah. It's on top of the. Oh, right there? Where them cedars are down? Where them logs and stuff are stacked yeah. in there? It's somewhere <clears throat> right there, but. And I've seen her up real good up here when I was telling you on deer hunting. Mm. I've seen her real close then. Well, that one. I never in my life seen a deer's hair stand up like a cat. And there's six deer in there, and they all had their hair standing up when they jumped the fence. So you could see like the female part on oh, the yeah. Sasquatch, the yeah, boobs and, all. and everything. It just looked like a naked woman. Really? It had hair, yeah. Like a hairy naked woman. Yeah. Oh wow. What'd she do? Did she look at you? 
she uh, spread the cedars open, seeming. She sit there for a little while, and then all of a sudden she just whoop, like closed the cedars and walked off. Mm, yeah. Where was that at? Right up there. Right over there, before they done all the logging. Where do you want me to go down all right. here? We could walk down there. It's probably soft and then cedars probably get stuck. What are we looking at here? Uh, the Indian burial ground. Oh, okay. Have well, you found any? Mound, oh, you, you you did say you found some arrowheads, correct? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a cedar tree top lodged in sideways right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Busted out of a cedar tree. I'll check it out. Yeah. All right, so we're checking out the property up here where Levi's had encounters, and supposedly there's Indian burial grounds. He's found arrowheads, things like that. He's seen the female right over here. That's kind of weird right there. Yeah, it's, it ain't been busted out of that top. It's not mm. from that tree, is it? I don't think so. <clears throat> it might be out of that tree. It doesn't seem like it's the top, but <clears throat> it could be because the top's missing. But what broke it? What yeah. did that? Yeah. See, you find stuff like this, and it's hard to say if it's just deadfall. You know, they fell that way, but then you think, and you're like, I've had encounters up here, so oh, yeah. could it possibly be them? Mm -hmm. mm, they're lodging into the ground, huh? Keep it like it was. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one's in the ground too. That's weird. Yeah. That, look at those three leaning up on that tree. Same with that little deal right there. Yeah, these are kind of stacked up in here. I never noticed that kind of stuff. Once you notice it, then you can't stop looking for it. That's oh, what yeah. happened to me. It sticks out like a sore thumb once you realize it. <coughs> It amazes me how the Sasquatch will walk through this stuff like it's nothing. Quietly, too. The house was set over there by a sinkhole. You ever pull any of these rocks up? No, you can if you want. No, I'll leave it the way it is. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> bad luck on me. No, neither do I. But uh, I know a guy, he found mounds like this. He's seen these and he said, yeah, they're Indian mounds. He's dug his up, though. What do you think? Body? <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. Body. 
And it's never been dozed this far in. So it's not dozed this far. Yeah. Well, they're definitely stacked up. <clears throat> I'll show you some stuff over at the loop that looks real similar to that. I, yeah. I think it is a foundation of an old Indian house or something. I've never There's an old road that comes, like when we go back to the house, I'll show you what runs along this. Yeah. Yeah. You heard the hyena laugh over there by the yeah, road? Just right there on that hill, the other hill. <clears throat> and it sounded just like hyena too. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Jimmy says, some weird language. Mm. What did the what did the infant one look like? The more little hair, one? More hair. It was fully yeah, covered with hair. Yeah. yeah, that's how the juvenile I saw was. Had big wide eyes, like big round ones, like the diameter of like a Coke can. And his whole face was covered with hair. It was like a little gorilla. Yeah. yeah. But the mom didn't look like him. No. Yep. She, she had an oval face. Oval face, okay. Without hair on it. It looked like human. Kind of human, but it's brown like a... Yeah. Was that the same one that was laying in the yard on the belly, on its yeah, belly? Same one. same one. Okay. I think they just keep coming back. Man. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely live around here. I mean, I doubt they'd need to migrate to like Indiana or Florida or something. All the intelligent people say there's just not enough food to support a creature of that size but it's like dogs people yeah. possums skunks deer squirrels turkey Fish. people's trash cans yeah. i think that's why they come around people you know people throw out food <clears throat> but yeah fish alone I, i've heard of them pulling out fish I'm trying to find the hyena left here's the one that my buddy captured Yeah, it's kind of like that, but it's more hyena, you know? Yeah. That's what I heard. That's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't sound like an animal. But I, you know what I mean? That doesn't sound like any wild animal. No, that sounds more like how I heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> you see a lot of cedar in here, too, man. It looks like deer rubs, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I hear that noise. I'm out of there, baby. <laughs> oh, it took me yeah. about five steps to get to the house. After <laughs> yeah. I heard that. It oh, I scared the shit out of me. Where do you think they threw that rock at you when you were driving? Uh, it was just recent. Like, Recently, huh? Around the corner and uh, about that big hit the windshield. Man. And I was in the opposite lane of the hill. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to throw it. Yeah. Yeah, rocks don't just fly out. No. Of it, my my daughter's 13 and it scared the hell out of her did it have a good arch to it what the rock yeah i just i didn't see it very it was so fast man it hit the windshield and come off of it man. and that was just on that hill over there but the asphalt's <clears throat> not that far from here mm. i pee outside a lot man and i think it tracks them in too mm -hmm. you know? 
Yeah, my, Didn't you see your uncle seen one years ago running down the side of the road running yeah. as fast as the car? Yeah, down that dirt road. So there's been a lot of encounters around oh, here. Oh yeah, yeah, like through generations. Okay. What were you doing when you seen the female and the juvenile? I was hunting. You were hunting? Yeah. What do you think they were doing? I'd say doing the same thing. Yeah. And the deer had their hair stood up. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen a deer's hair stand up like that. When you seen that one laying on its belly and you saw that cat, was the cat really yeah, alarmed? It was, yeah. The hairs? Its hair was it a black too. cat? No, it was a calico. Okay. Have you ever seen the cat before? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, yeah, it was a house cat. Okay, it was a house cat. It's easy to hide in here, man. Yeah, it is. You ever find any tracks out here? One time, man, in the snow, I seen a butt print. I don't know if it was from a bear, though, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of bear out here. So I've never okay. Seen one <clears throat> yeah. They say they're here. That's what they say. And they certainly are. If they're Sasquatch, there's got to be bear, oh, yeah. mountain lions. Your mom said she had a track safe for us in the garden one time, but your uncle come over with the tractor something after his foot and plowed up the whole yeah, garden. Yeah, there's a lot of deer tracks out here. Oh, yeah, watch it. They had horses in here, but they moved them. Oh, okay. I'm going to take any Sasquatch turds. Oh, there's your blind. Something's moving around the rocks. Yeah, there's Bigfoot sightings all over Missouri. I don't know about northern Missouri, but... Yeah, if there's more open up there. Yeah. Then again, I took a report from Chicago the other day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but... The guy in the city claims he was seeing him looking through his window. Yeah. On the second floor. He's like, I don't even know how they could even get up there. It's so high up. Yeah. Makes you just wonder. Yeah, I was sitting in the deer stand and she was right behind that cedar. Where is the suspect? Right there behind that little cedar. Okay, so right behind there. Yeah. Man, they got close to you. Yeah, I seen her good, dude. But then deer jumped over the I feed right here. Oh. Right, you can see the ground. Yeah. And they jumped over the fence. Uh -huh. You know, the deer did. Yeah. And that's when she'd come around that little cedar. Oh, so they were definitely hunting. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, she, it was pushing them deer fast. They yeah. was running. It wasn't. They wasn't just galloping or something, you know. Maybe they and thought like four ridges come together right there. Right. Maybe they thought if um they go by you, yeah, and get that I'll Sasquatch off them. Yeah. Or yeah, that that way too. The and Sasquatch. They get the gut piles yeah. Or yeah. Either the deer were using you for safety, like that was yeah. safer than what was chasing them, or the squatch were chasing the deer, so you'd shoot them and they could yeah. get some some of the leftovers. Yeah, it was pretty cool, man, really. Yeah. And I was in that blind right. I wouldn't get up in it or nothing. It's pretty rotten now, but mm -hmm. the ceiling's falling down in it.
I'd say it's probably a little shaky to get in it right now. But yeah. I bet it's still holding Yeah, I feed right here like mineral, minerals and mm -hmm. stuff that makes deer animals grow big. So it makes it feel weird, you know. Oh, yeah. It'll spook you up for yeah, sure. for sure. Once it gets dark or you're coming oh, in here yeah. in the morning, you're Going like, back to the house that night. It was pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where did they go, though? Did you just sit up there? Or yeah, what? I sit up there during rifle. What time. happened to them when you saw them behind they the They walked back over the hill. They went back? Yeah. Oh, okay. And they wasn't moving fast. It, you know, they just being cautious about They them. casually walked back? Yeah. Could you smell anything? No, they don't stink, really. Yeah, I didn't Easy notice the smell. I heard if they kind get... A skunk man or something that if you live in a swamp, you're going to stink. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But... Yeah. Yeah, it looked just like a woman, man. Naked yeah. woman. Should I do a call? See if you can, if you want. See if we get a response. Whoop! Now, if they are in here, they might push over a tree as we're walking back up to the yeah. vehicle. You hear a big tree just crash. They're definitely in here, buddy. Yeah, no, I believe. Be it. glad it's summertime coming. Yeah. It's nice out. Was the coat really clean, or was it matted and messy? It was clean. Yeah, that's what I noticed with Sasquatch. Terrible. They kind of had like a shine to it, huh? Yeah. yeah. Shine red brown hair, man. What color was the well, juvenile? Like a, you know, like a rain paint, how bright orange it is. Uh -huh. It's like a gr off color. Yeah. Did you notice any weird weird features on her face? Did uh, it have like the... She had like a flat nose. Flat nose. Yeah. Long, I thin lips. Close, man. Yeah. Did the juvenile, yeah, could you see any teeth? Years. Like fangs no, or anything? his face, you couldn't really make it out because it had so much hair on it. You just saw eyes sticking out of the oh, fur, yeah. like Pac-Man? Or the, the creatures that chase Pac-Man? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I've seen quite, quite a few times I've seen it. Does she have long arms? Yeah. She yeah, she does almost to her knees. Okay. But yeah, she's definitely real. Yeah. Well, that's cool. You got to I'm see her more than once. Like telling people about it, you know. Yeah. And it makes us feel comfortable to, you know, come out with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it helps me too because. Living with something like that, not being able to talk to anyone, it's pretty rough, you know? Oh, yeah. Because when you tell people, they're like, get out of here. You know what yeah. I mean? You're seeing shit. How much have you smoked tonight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's non-believers, but oh, yeah. they're real. Looks like another rock, rock mount over here on the hill. Mm -hmm. see it? Oh, yeah, I do see it. Jim, where are you sleeping at tonight? Greg's house. Greg's house? Okay. <clears throat> yeah. He's gonna let you sleep out there by yourself. I'm sleeping yeah. in the cabin, I promise you that. <coughs> yeah, that, that cabin's got a demon in there. You think so? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They've seen shit floating in the air, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like cable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to sleep in there. <laughs> I like Bigfoot. But. He went oh. there one night with uh, Greg and the light flicked on and off or something in there. See how all them leaves are moved? Mm -hmm. Those are turkeys. You know? yeah. yeah. Turkey makes scratching. You've had experiences at oh, yeah. this cabin? I've known Greg for a long time. Oh. I was, we went caving one time, man. Mm -hmm. And there's a, we found, well, I can't tell you on the camera what we found. But. He goes, I can tell. 
He goes, all these people around here are polluted from this water down here in Rowan. <laughs> and he goes, uh, let me give you this tape. And it was on a VHS. He said, take this home and watch it. Share it with your friends. And it was an Alex Jones tape. Mm -hmm. First time I was introduced to him. And pretty, uh, pretty smart guy. Yeah, I like Alex <laughs> Jones. He's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> like that guy on uh, What About Bob? You ever see that movie? You think it'll burn even with that? Like right now? Now that the sun's down? Yeah. Is this tree real? Yes. Really? That tree is about 45 years old. 45 years old? Really? What is it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's cool. That is cool. Never seen a plant so big in, in, a, in a house. Out in the wild, it grows and then it falls over wherever it touches the ground. Mm -hmm. It regroups and then it, it spreads that way. I put the, the cedar tree in there, the, the stake to hold it up, and I got it tied up so that it goes straight up. Dang, that's cool. So up like that. Yeah, I like that. Laid it down and and they built this place, that's my dad. He just turned 93 two days ago. Oh, wow. We had a big party. Kind of funny, I seen a karma do, do its magic in a timely fashion at that you know, my my brother in law's mom, they're extremely you know, well to do in St. Louis. And mm. They came down and they had a on the other side of this we had a golf thing set up, and uh, my the the her husband was walking back up here to get something. He goes, "Does anybody want a beer?" And my buddy goes, "Yeah, I'll take one." Mm. And, uh, so he left, and when he left, the the mother come over. She goes, "My husband doesn't get people." <laughs> and he's like, I didn't mean no offense. You know, he asked, you know, no, I'll get my own beer. Don't worry about it. Right. So she stomped off and she came over here and she sat at this table right here. Well, that morning it had rained ferociously. And unbeknownst to anybody else, that, that big tent sagged down and had water in it. Mm. And she sat down. And as soon as she sat down, a gust of wind came out of nowhere, hit that tent, and about 50 gallons of water hit her right on top of the head. <laughs> That's what you get, huh? <laughs> and, and they had come down to the big... Uh, bus, like a rock star bus, and they jumped in that and they bolted out of here. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, karma really works. <laughs> it sure does. Yeah, it was fun. Bridget Bardot Mac the Third was her name. We were starting to grow grapes, but they never took, so. Mm, yeah. But that was the quick uh, tour of that. Take this out of the plastic wrap. All right, so tell me about this photo. Well, this was back in probably 1990, 91, 92, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And I just bought a uh, real cheap digital camera, my first one I ever owned. And uh, we had this spot that was in Lincoln County along the Mississippi River but, uh, tributary down through there mm. that we found that was an excellent Indian artifact location. And um, 
that's where 90% of my collection came from. I got several hundred beautiful points out of there. But um, one night I was there digging. We, we dug at night because it was so hot outside. It's not so hot when it's evening time. Um, and with the moon shining bright, a lot of times it, it was, it's just a nice, peaceful, wonderful evening to, to, to go out there and find you know arrowheads. And uh, like most nights, I went out there and, uh, and I found a real beautiful point. And I'd seen on the camera it had a automatic setting where you could set it for five or ten seconds like that. And I thought I set it for ten seconds because mm. I wanted to do the happy dance. Hey, look what I found. And the camera went off prematurely in like three seconds because you can, you can tell by when you see this picture, I'm not posing for the picture at all. I was getting ready to. And I had mud all over me, so I, I didn't retake the picture. I said, ah, the heck with that. I'll look at it later. So I just threw everything back in my bag and... Went on about my business that night, went on home, and uh, I still hadn't looked at the picture. And, well, let me show you the picture. When I did look at it, I was startled by what was behind me, and the, the picture doesn't. This is a, I lost the original, I don't know what happened to the camera, and I had emailed this to a friend of mine, and she still had it in her email, so she resent me the copy. And then this is a, a print of the actual, you know, that's why the picture's so horrible. Plus, it was a real low pixel camera back when I bought it. Mm. But it was cool when I bought it, you know, it was the first digital camera I had. So this entity back here, I went back in the daytime to make sure there was no tree structure or anything like that that matched that. And uh, to me, it, it, it represents what... I would call a, a Bigfoot, the way it looks. Um, again, it's, it's hard to, the picture doesn't do the, the, the original justice, but you can still see what I'm talking about, the outline. And, uh, and that's a deceiving hill there because it's actually a cliff side. It goes straight up and down. There's no, you can't walk up there. If you fell off there, you might break an arm or a leg. You wouldn't die, but it's pretty, you know, it's pretty high. Yeah. And to get up there, you have to go way down this, this, this cornfield around the bend and then it goes up a hill that they, they plant corn all the way up to the top up here. And there's no houses for miles and it goes forever before you see a house. And then the direction I'm facing that way it goes all the way to the Mississippi River, which again is another couple miles of nothing but fields. Mm. So there's just no uh, presence of you know a lot of folks down there. But before I seen the picture, I made my way up and I was digging up on top of the hill up there in the field. And uh, like any plowed field that's still actively farmed, the, the plow would normally go up to about 18 inches deep. So if you get below the 18 inch level, you start finding arrowheads that weren't broke by the plow or, or damaged. Mm -hmm. And I had a big, beautiful hole about the size of that table there. And um, just down to the 18 inch level, you could heard a pin drop. It was such a beautiful night with the full moon. And uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I can't repeat the noise I heard. It was like someone had a giant log in their hand, swinging it through the air, and it was going, I could remember hearing the wind going whack as it hit the tree, mm -hmm. and it was thunderous. And it was so violent and loud with it being so quiet out there, I turned my, my headlamp off and I was so shaken, I couldn't believe what I was hearing because I've never heard anything like that. Mm. And I sat there for a minute and again, the full moon, I could see the open field, but the, the tree line of the woods was pitch black. I couldn't see in there. And I was only 30 yards from the tree line. And all of a sudden I heard it again. It's like it was coming through the, wind, the air. <sighs> Whack! It, almost to the point where the ground seemed like it shook, it was so violent. And I was like, oh my God. And then it did it, three whacks in a row, went, whack, whack, whack. And I grabbed all my stuff and I jumped up. I was so scared and I said, F you. And mm -hmm. I just took off running. My car was almost a mile away. Um, and I just completely out of breath when I got down there. I was so scared. And then I pulled this picture up on my uh, camera that I had. And it makes sense to me that whatever that is, I call it a Bigfoot was yeah. the one that was whacking the tree up there, making that hor horrific noise. So that's the same day that you heard that loud noise? No, it was uh, within a week. The same place? The same place, yeah. yeah. I, instead of being down in this field down here, I was in the upper field up there. 
And uh, after I've seen this picture and heard that noise, I've never went back. You think it has something to do with um, you finding arrowheads? Uh, no, it's, it's that, I don't know because the, there was three different generations of Indians of, of Indian time frames that we found arrowheads in there. So they had lived there for a long, long time. Um, the Google Earth picture, you could look and, and scan the cornfield in the dirt, and in that particular spot, the dirt actually turned more charcoal brown or black mm. from all the fire pits that were there from their encampment where they used to obviously live there. Um, I don't know. It's a beautiful, peaceful place. Yeah. Um, you said there's a lot of land up there, a lot of woods? Yeah, just thousands of acres in all directions. Mm. Um, yeah, I've heard then, a lot of reports. The, the river, from... you know, it goes all the way up the, the whole state. So it's, mm. and it, it was, the next county up from that was um, Pike. Pike County, yeah. Mm. And we were, th this place was within a couple miles of the actual Pike County line. So you're getting pretty far up, like going towards Hannibal area, up that, up, up that way. I've heard a lot of reports from Hannibal too. And uh, But it's it's desolate like that all the way up that, that river. So... Mm. What a great place if you're trying to not be seen by a lot of folks to be a, a Bigfoot, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But uh, I told you that before that I, I get a lot of reports from east and west of the Mississippi. Right. I just, I, I, I think it's cool that the folks that get to actually eyewitness them and see them, but when they, when they do what they do at nighttime and make those horrible noises, to me, it was like, I don't want you to come back. Mm -hmm. That's what I was you know, taking it as. I, he didn't want me there, otherwise he wouldn't have been doing such a good job at scaring me because I actually had never been that scared before in my life. What did you think when you first heard it? I was in shock because, like I said, there was no wind. The moon was full. It was like 2.33 in the morning. And for that thunderous noise to come out of nowhere with no warning or anything, it was, it was I don't know, it, was, it shocked me. It scared me so bad I, I just stopped. And uh, I was trying to process what I was listening to, and I just, I've never, I've had friends of mine take as big a logs as they can and smack a tree with them, and it doesn't even come, it doesn't come anywhere close to what I heard that night. Yeah. I mean, it was that violent, and that, and I, I never, I suppose I should have went back maybe one more time in the daytime to see if I could go through the woods and see what he was whacking, but I, I just assumed that, uh, that was his warning sign to get out of here, you know, I don't want you up here. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to tell me a bunch of times. I'll listen the first time and <laughs> just, yeah. I'll leave you alone. Now, up on this bank back here, that straight up and down bluff, off to the, the, the wood line here, and then the field started, there was a big, I don't know what you call it, but a big hill, like a dirt hill, and it was dug out on the other side up to the, like, like a big bedding area. Mm -hmm. That was about 12 foot on the inside, like a bowl on the inside, like somebody made it and had logs stacked up in front of it, like a structure, like you could climb over it and hide back there. I have no idea if maybe that was a place for them to, to go to. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly wasn't, didn't look man-made. It was, somebody made it, but it wasn't, there was no presence of any footprints or hatchets uh, or chainsaws or anything like that, that that had the trees stacked in there. And uh, that always puzzled me what, what that was there for, you know, because it, it, again, somebody put it there like that for a reason. There, it wasn't just the trees fell that way and that's how it was. Somebody, somebody structurally made this little area, and like I said, it was probably 12 foot, 12 or 15 foot on the inside, just like a, almost like a canoe shape on the inside of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was real clean on the inside. There was no refuse of any kind, no bones or any kind of things like that. So I, I don't know. That was just that, that curiosity part. Always, I always wondered what that was back there. But yeah, makes me know. wonder if the Sasquatch are connected to the Native Americans. There's that possibility. Mm. Um, well, I interviewed Levi today. He told me about his Bigfoot encounters. Yeah. Did he have any Bigfoot encounters prior to having the paranormal experiences back there at the cabin? Or is that after he? No, he, he did the, the 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 one time he, he was calling the cat. I don't know if he told you about the cat, and he he walked out his front door and it it teardrops down to the field, mm -hmm. 
And he said he walked up to that first teardrop and he, he told me the cat come flying past him as fast as it could run with his hair sticking up. Mm -hmm. And he turned back around and this thing sat up on the hill and growled at him. And uh, he said he turned and burned back to the house and almost ripped the screen door off trying to get into the house. He was so scared. Yeah. And that was well before um, any of the other stuff happened. So. No, so that was before? That was before that, yeah. Okay, I didn't know if that had something to do with... No, that was before that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's still that stuff over there at the hut. I just have no reason why that all of a sudden showed up. Yeah. It wasn't like that when we first got here, and it just mm. and for it to show up and be mean, you know, it's just it's just you know, you had mentioned to me when we were talking off camera that potentially they like abandoned houses mm -hmm. where there's not a lot of action, so there's no interference with whatever it is they're trying to do. Yeah, and uh, he's definitely. And since we built this place over here, he definitely put a nail in the coffin of nobody going back over there. So, mm. so he definitely made a good point to keep everybody run out of there. Yeah, I'd I don't say know. So. You know, I don't know. It's just I need some professional help to see what's going on over there. Somebody that's stronger than me with knowing what to do because I'm not afraid of him. Mm. You know, I, I believe in the Lord, so I'm not afraid that you know. But still, you don't go flirting with something negative either that, that has potential that could be harmful. So, right. you know, I'm mindful of that as well. So I, I just don't know what, you know, maybe some of your folks out there. In the yeah, if there's a paranormal research group that looks for ghosts, demons, and knows how to handle that, get hold of Greg, get hold of me. Right, we'll yeah. set it up. I'd love to have them come out and... and uh, do what they do or, or, you know, suggest what we need to do or do something because mm -hmm. uh, I'm just glad because I always heard that when you have things like that happen, if you move to a different location or something, they'll follow you. Mm -hmm. So I'm just glad being this close, you know, you're only, you know, I don't know how many acres that would be from here to there, but maybe a half mile from here to the other hut up there when this place was built. I'm just glad it hasn't come down Yeah, down this. Here. Now down here we have a separate entity of uh, what they what we call the old grandma. That that the story was that the, the the folks that lived here some time ago the house burned down and she was the only one that lived, mm. and uh, she swore she was never leaving. And after the place was built here, the doors would would shut. You know, you'd be sitting there and the door would shut, and you'd be like, "What was that?" And then you'd go back over there and the door would be open. And then the door would shut, and then you hear a door shut over there, and then it was like it was crazy. And an uh, Indian friend of mine, lady, she's the one that told me the story about the, the, the woman that said she was never leaving. She said, well, you need to get her a rocking chair and put it on that back porch. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if you'd notice or not, but the rocking chair is right behind you, actually. I don't think you'd be able to see Outside it. Outside on the deck? Yeah. I was actually sitting in it earlier. They did, yeah, yeah, it's just right. Well, I don't know if I can turn the light on or not, yeah. but it... Uh, See if we can get enough light where you're, I don't know if you can get that on your camera or not. But it's not a, it's not a no, it's nothing fancy, it's just a rocking chair. Uh, okay, that one. No, I was sitting over here in these newer age ones. Yeah, no, this, this. Do you ever see it swaying back and forth? Yeah, it, 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 there won't be any wind blowing at all and you'll see it move and, and you just say, okay, so you just leave, leave it alone and go on about your day. It looks pretty old too. Yeah, well, as soon as we got the rocking chair, then all the doors and the noises and the weird noises that don't make sense and the lights flickering, then it all stops. Hmm. And then my cousin come down and uh, we had a different one at the time. And he's like, what is this old junk here with all the, the newer stuff we had? So he threw it in the fire. Remember David Burnett? Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden the lights start flickering, the doors are slamming again, like, holy cow. Yeah. So I found this one. Uh, it was in a flood. It was down in a ditch. I, I got it out of the ditch and I brought it back over here and now once again it, everything's calm. So we leave the rocking chair out here for, we call her grandma so that she's happy and then everything goes smooth over here. So I'm just glad that whatever's going on that way up there where the hut's at hasn't followed down here to, to create problems down here. Mm -hmm. At least not yet anyway, so I hope that doesn't come to that. But Yeah, yeah let's hope. And again, hopefully some of your, somebody in your listening crowd can give us some pointers or help out in this situation and, yeah. you know, because I'd appreciate it because it's been, it's, 
it, it's just nerve wracking to have that going on up there and have it happen to so many people witnessed it, um, which I'm kind of glad for. That way, you know that they know you're not just crazy because they've gone up there and witnessed it themselves. So yeah. Well, I'll sleep in there tonight. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Now, when you when you've had I don't enough, know what I can do for you. When you've had enough, you come back down here and just come on in. And yeah, Greg's already shown me which bed I can go and sleep in <laughs> if things get bad. Leave it up there. Because, don't follow you home. Yeah, I'll tell it. You stay here. And if you if you make it long enough, make sure you stick around to four thirty because four thirty is when it came alive that time that we were with the Ghost Whispers. I don't know what it was about four thirty, but everything came on at four thirty. Really? Were you guys up all night, or did it wake you guys up? No, we were up all night. Oh, okay. They got here about, asleep. I told them it, it was probably better late night stuff. They got here maybe 8, 9 o'clock mm -hmm. at, at night. And then it took them a while to set all their, their different um, equipment pieces up that they brought. So Did they stay? Oh, no, no. After that, they, they threw everything in the car and they, they said, we're never, we're never coming back. Mm. This is way above our, our, what we expected. And we don't, you know, you need holy people to, we're not, you know. What do they experience, though? Well, the, the, the lady of the group, there was two guys and a lady. Um, she didn't know what I saw when I went running out of there after what happened to me. And then later she explained that she seen the same thing, uh, this horse-looking head with the black eyes and the antlers and the staff. And so she's seen the exact same thing that did, I saw. And you, did you tell her about it before that? No, no. Oh. So she, she volunteered that, and then, and then that's, that was the same story I had. And she said it kept trying to touch her hair, and it wouldn't leave her alone, and she got frustrated. Um, and was worried about it because it was so, it's not the, it's not a good looking picture. It's kind of a scary looking picture of that thing. Mm. Um, and they were definitely shaken up from the experience. It was a lot more than they had anticipated, you know, you know, I, mean, I guess they maybe weren't doing it long enough or they just hadn't had that level of activity happen all at one time like it did that night. Mm. And they were just... They were definitely, they were just ready to leave. Yeah. They, they didn't want to be there no more, so. Yeah, I don't blame them. And that was that. They were supposed to get me a copy of some of the stuff they did, but I never did get receive it, so I don't know. You know, maybe it was just too much for them, but. Yeah. But everything they had was lighting up, and, and, and all their monitors were going crazy, and the, it was, it, there was definitely, and the white noise things they had were, were all off the chart. Mm. Um, I'm trying to remember what else they had. A lot of activity. It, it was it was a lot going on. Yeah, <clears throat> a lot going on. So these motion lights ever turn on on their own? <laughs> or I guess it, you never know if it's critters or. Yeah, well, I try to look all the time. I never see any critters, but they do come on a lot. Yeah. And well, you're staying in the same spot. You didn't move, and it and it come right. Yeah, and it, come it, it's, it's I have no idea. No. And it'll. Uh, last night when I came home, I just put that brand new one on the driveway, and it works perfect. It doesn't come on until you walk through there. And I, I stopped at the corner and the light came on. And I'd already felt that weight. Every time there's something weird going on, I feel like there's a weight on my shoulders. Like, See, that's how I felt like in the cabin. It's like something's weighing down on me, like yeah. pushing down on me, and I can feel it. And then that's when my hair will start standing up on the back of my neck. And that's what it was doing. And I was, I'm looking around the house going, what is down there? I know there's something down there. And I could feel it, but I couldn't see anything. Hmm. And then the light never went off. I came, I pulled in. Came in the house and like two minutes later, it went off like it's supposed to. So yeah. why it was staying on, there was nothing there that I could see with my eyes. And I don't, you know, it's just, it happens every once in a while. The gate at the end of the, the driveway is a half mile long. So at the gate at the end, sometimes if I'm going to be gone a long time, I'll lock it. Mm -hmm. And there's something down there at the gate. <clears throat> every once in a while, I'll get that pressure and my hair will stand up. I'm like, oh my God, I got to get out of the car and unlock this gate. And I, I look around real good. I got bright flashlights and I never see anything, but man, I can't get that lock undone quick enough. So, and then zip on down there. So it gets, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of most things, but I just, that when you get that feeling, my intuition's never been wrong. It's never mm -hmm. lied to me. You know, it's, it's always, if there's, I'm feeling something, there's a reason for it. So yeah, you got to follow your gut. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if it ever gets too bad, you can call me even if it's paranormal. Right. Oh, I, I, yeah. I mean, sometimes was, you can't call anybody at least. Yeah. Luckily, my family's uh, real supportive and, and, and my whole life, and they, they always wanted me to pursue my ability to be more of a medium type person, but mm. I just left it alone. And <clears throat> I'm not sure that, you know, that's my job, so. 
Yeah. I don't understand it all. And it's been a lot of fun and, and pleasant for the most part, except for this. So that was, I didn't like the negative side of it all, but the, yeah. the positive side has been okay. Creepy, Where, creepy, but okay. Right. Where did you see the Native American man, the woman, and the child? That was again up here. Up there? When, when I, when I went up to the top, mm. again, you had to walk way down and up this big field. And uh, I was up there in the field, and this was before the, the, the noise. Like I said, you could have heard a pin drop. The moon was right over my head, full. It was just so gorgeous. And uh, I had a nice hole going. I was just getting ready to hopefully find some great pieces. And I got this twinkling in my, in my skin, and I just turned over my shoulder and looked. And off in the distance, there was a, a man, a woman, and a child holding hands. And the, the man had a little feather fly off the, the side of his head. And he turned and just looked at me as they walked away. And I thought that was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, uh, maybe two hours after that is when that, that horrible whack. Okay. I, I did, Same I, day then. I wish I could mimic that. I just, I don't know what it would take to mimic what I heard. It would take a lot more than, a, than any normal man would do. Yeah, a giant wooden bat up against a big I mean, up tree. huge. It was just, and I don't know what the wind was. It, like it was traveling through the woods, like whack. Like it was a big swing, so I mean, it was like, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense where it was coming from or what was causing it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I did figure out why the Indians lived down there. Out of all them places, I was down there digging one time, and, and behind this, there was a dead tree, and I heard all the tornado sirens going off one night, <clears throat> and uh I stood up out of my hole and I looked and at the end of that field down there, I, I was seeing whole trees with the root rods flying by because of the tornado that was coming my way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I pulled out a cigarette and without cupping my hands or nothing, lit my bick and there was no wind there. As I'm watching trees fly by there was where I was standing, there was no wind moving anything. Mm-hmm. I lit my cigarette until the tornado actually come up over the hill then it hit that dead tree limb up there, and that tree limb popped off, and I looked, and it come, and it, it hit me right on my back and knocked me down in the hole and knocked the air out of, my, my, out of me for a while. I laid there for a while and uh, caught my composure, and then I, you know, that freaked me out because of the tornado stuff, so I called it a night after that and went on home. But, um, but I figured they lived there because of the, the weather phenomenon. It was a nice, calm, you know, unless the storm was right over their head, it was a nice, calm area for, the, for their campsite probably, so mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. Yeah. I wish I actually owned the place. I mean, it needed it, it could it would be cool to professionally excavate it and and really document everything that was there because it was obviously a, a great campsite with more than three generations of Indians living there. Hmm. You could get down 6 or 7 feet and then you'd hit the water table. But all the way at the bottom at the bottom we'd find these beautiful uh hematite plummet uh plummets that were uh like weights. Hmm. Real polished uh, hematite and stuff, but they were already worked their way all the way down to the water table, hmm. and I'm sure there was stuff. If you could dig through the water table, you'd find even more stuff. But uh, it was it was just a really neat place. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it. Really neat place. It was a lot of it was a lot. Of, I'm I'm sad that I don't get to go back there anymore. But and I'm I might go back there again now, but I don't know. It just it when something does that and tells you to, it's telling me you know don't don't come back. So I figured that was my my sign. So yeah. I was glad it lasted as long as it did. Because right. I got an excellent Arrowhead collection, so yeah. <laughs> that I'm very proud of. I love showing people, so that's cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, great. Well, I appreciate it, man. Absolutely, I'm mm-hmm. glad you come out. Yeah, me too. Glad yeah. we could meet. You standing there? That's how good. Oh, so it was vivid. It was. Huh? It was an actual full. Like he came in from Star Trek on the on the the you know time or the where they. All right, so we're back here at this barn, and um, as soon as I got here, it sounded like something dropped. Like <laughs> earlier, whenever I was trying to camp, it sounded like something was banging on the door. Um, honestly, I don't like doing paranormal research, but um, I feel bad for Greg, and he wants somebody to check it out. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. He said if things get bad, I can come back. So. We'll see what happens, guys. Don't really want to do this. Looks like somebody's tried breaking in. See that? Yeah. It's 
not good. Thought I heard something out here. Okay. Coyotes are going off out there. There's that dead rat. Look at that. Does that make you guys want to stay here? Look at that. That's disgusting. You get a disease just by staying in here. Well, we'll start off by turning on some lights. Somewhere over here, you can turn on a light. I think I'm not really sure what does what. Um, this thing over here. Yeah, there we go. Bring some life into this place. There we go. Look how creepy this is. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Does the devil live within these walls? That didn't really rhyme too well, did it? All right, first of all, I'm going to stay here tonight because they asked me to, not because I want to. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are not allowed to harm me. That is rule number one, and you are no you're not more powerful than Jesus or any of his good angels. So in the name of God, you stay wherever you are, and I'm going to stay wherever I'm at, okay? All right, we are in the haunted house. We're about to shut the lights off and use night vision, but there's been all kinds of stuff that's happened here, and I don't do paranormal research. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to help Greg out, but he also gave his encounters on the channel, and um, I could see the fear in his eyes whenever he said that he has nobody to help him. Who do I call? And I was like, well... I don't want to stay there. I'm here for Bigfoot, but I felt bad because he was willing to help me out. And um, I don't know, I, I guess I just felt obligated to do this for him because he's just such a nice guy and he was hoping it doesn't follow him to his house. But I mean, honestly, I think me investigating is just gonna make everything worse. And um, this stuff seems to be connected to me. and. I don't really want to mess with it, but I mean, honestly, I don't want to stay here tonight, but where else am I going to stay? He said I could stay in his house, but how am I going to, how am I going to do Bigfoot research that way? At least out here, I'm out in the middle of the woods, but in case anybody's wondering why I'm wearing this coat is because it's pretty cold outside. It's supposed to drop below freezing. And um, I tried to get a fire going out there earlier and nothing was working. I had a bunch of newspaper, had a lighter, and I was breaking sticks off up high in the trees, um, breaking off old cedar branches and nothing was working. It's been raining lately, so um, nothing was catching on fire, but I'm gonna investigate this place and I'm gonna see what happens. I used to live in a haunted house or something was following me where I lived and I swore to myself that I would never do this again. And here I am messing with this stuff again. But honestly, I'm just here 
to sleep and um, we did Greg's investigation today or interview and tomorrow we're going to Lake of the Ozarks and Jim's gonna tell his story of all his encounters that he had. And um, I've already interviewed Jim. It's the Lake of the Ozarks interview and it's pretty good, honestly. So it's worth the wait. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna stay here to see what happens. The coyotes have been going off outside. You can hear a bunch of owls hooting. And um, guys, I don't know. Greg claims that he's seen like this horse Anubis figure right up here and um, it had horns and honestly I don't want to mess with that guys I'm not calling that thing out honestly I'm calling to Jesus to help me out Jesus watch over me as I stay here tonight and I don't want to honestly see anything but if something happens I do have the gear to record it but I know the way this stuff works and it's very aware of technology they can manipulate technology and it's very difficult to capture that kind of stuff I know there's a lot of paranormal groups out there and there's doors slamming and things like that but you don't know if they're making that stuff up for views that they get so I want to say it's real which the paranormal is real but I'm saying a lot of these teenagers, young adults going out there and being like, oh my God, what was that? And they have zero fear. That tells me that it's not real because if they really experience that stuff, let's say if like this face showed up on camera and disappeared, a lot of those guys' reaction is like, oh wow, was that a face? Wow, I can't believe that. Honestly, if that really happened, their reaction would be much deeper than that. So I do question a lot of these paranormal groups and um, maybe some of them don't have any fear, but I've experienced this stuff before, and it will leave you breathless. I don't care how brave you are, it will leave you breathless. And a lot of those guys are just like, wow, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Oh, my gosh. So that's so cool. But I question it, guys. Because even with Bigfoot activity, it's just like, you're so shocked that it's like, oh, my God, where's my camera? Oh, shoot. You know, that's after the fact that it already happened. So... I don't know. I'm not going to say they're lying, but I will say that their reaction is kind of fake. But we are at a haunted house today, and we're going to investigate. All right. We are recording. Things just got much, much darker in here. This is freaky. All right, let's see what we got. Mm, something's in the way. I cannot see my hand in front of my face. Look at that, isn't that creepy? It's pretty creepy, I would say. Yes, it's creepy. What about a red light? This mirror is pretty freaky. This is like an old school kitchen. Look at that. It's a magic chef right there. Hello, magic chef. Probably a lot of good meals cooked there. Some chick playing some music on the saxophone. Yeah, look at that. Let's go upstairs. Oops. Look at that giant rat trap. Bet that thing's caught some giant rats. Oh man, this is where I don't want to go. The presence is so heavy in here. I mean, like heavy, like someone's standing on your chest. There's the audio recorder. We got that thing going, so it captures sound down here and hopefully up here. Whew. This is where it's heavy at. Dang, I can almost, I 
can barely breathe up here, guys. Look at these beds. How creepy is that? Wonder how much history this place has. All right, this is the room where, where he saw that figure. Camera does not want to focus very well. Yeah, this is a. Uh, honestly, I feel dirty being in here. Not just because of the rat crap and everything, but just because of what is supposed to be in here. Hmm. So I believe then nothing can harm me because I believe in Jesus. Man, why does my camera not want to focus? Focus camera. All right. There we go. I think I fixed the focus on this camera. Hopefully things stay in focus. But yeah, look how creepy that is. That chair right there next to that window is not right. <laughs> it's like someone sits there. But yeah, we're up here walking around where we shouldn't be. And I just don't think it's a good place to be. But what can we do? Just rebook it in the name of Jesus and that's all we can do. If things get so bad, we'll go go back to Greg's place. Like, I don't have to stay here, but here we are nonetheless. I'm going to go outside and investigate for Sasquatch pretty soon. And, um, yeah, like I said, I don't want to stay in here. Who does? Who wants to stay in here, guys? Not me. Definitely not me. But, yeah, I'm not going to call this stuff out, ask it to do anything, because... That's not what we want to do. But if there is a paranormal group out there who's willing to stay here and do that kind of research, by all means, contact me, contact Greg, and um, you better be serious. Don't just come out here to have fun or because you want to experience a ghost. Come out here because you want to help them out and because you know how to do the research, all right? So, yeah. But I'm going to go downstairs now because the feeling is like so overwhelming. And it could just be my fear playing on me, but I know these things feed off fear, so I'm not going to give it that type of attention. Yeah. All right, let's go. Because I don't feel right up here. Fell down the stairs. Handrail. Can't see anything. Man. It's creepy stuff, guys. Look at this safe, that's an awesome safe. Greg, if you wanna sell me that safe, possibly give it to me for Christmas, I'd be glad to take it off your hands, so just let me know, buddy. Um, this is an old school TV, what I consider old school. When I was a kid, they were just like the wooden boxes with the glass screen, and it's like it had a projector in the back. 
that's what I was used to when I was a kid. And we'd have like three broken ones and we'd just use them to like set vases and flowers on top of there and decorations. You'd have your old TV stacked up, or you'd, you'd have your, you would have your new TV stacked on your old TV. That's how it worked back in the day. So all these kids nowadays, they only remember the flat screens, HD, 4K, 8K TVs, but not me. We had the old school ones. We'd be watching Looney Tunes, um, Batman, Ninja Turtles on Saturday. What do we got here? Oh yeah, that's exactly what we need right there. The haunting. What else do we got? Man, these doors are creepy. Look at that. It's like there's no escape. You're not getting out. Like this one over here. It's like latch shut. Ha 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 ha. You're never getting out. But yeah, this is definitely an old school place. These tape players are pretty interesting. If that's what they are. Can't tell in the dark. The horns freak me out because of the story in here. Or the experiences that they've had in here. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about right there. Field and stream. That's where it's at, boys. Fly swatter. Yeah, we're going to need this for night. A few boxes of ammunition. There's the creepy couch with the bat. We'll need some. We'll need a baseball bat, a safe, all the ammo. What's back here? Creepy lamp. The refrigerator. Mm. Hot water heater. Look how much. Rat poos on there. You guys sure you want to come investigate this place, huh? You really want to come and investigate. Oh shoot, I touched the lens. Never touch your camera lens. Definitely let me know if you guys hear anything or see anything. I'm more paying attention to my camera and not what's going on around me, so you'll have to let me know. I wonder what that is. Some type of old tank. That's where I'll be sleeping at tonight. The Cabela's chair. I highly recommend the Cabela's chair. It's very, very comfortable. And you have this pillow that you can adjust up and down. And it feels really good on your neck. Um, it'll lay back completely flat and it'll lock up so it's pretty nice it's got this little table that comes out i got my gloves and my beanie on there but you can put your cell phone in there you can put your drink whatever it is you're drinking and you can kick back it also has like a little spot for your foot or for your feet and it's really comfortable you can rest your arms on there and like i said you can Lean it back as far as you want, and it has these little levers on the side that you can lock up, and you can lay back all the way or however far back you want. But it's really nice to have out in the summertime when you're out on the river or lake or just camping out in the woods. And it has, like, pads right there for your back and where you sit down at and for your feet. It's pretty comfortable. And it seems to be woven in to the frame which makes it very sturdy. It hasn't come apart yet. I don't have any complaints about it. The only thing I do complain about is the weight. It's pretty heavy. I mean, honestly, yeah. Good old Hoover. Oh, yeah. This is the creepy place I'm staying at. There's the table. And again, that overwhelming fear feeling has come over me and I have no idea why. I don't like that. The mirror is very creepy. Nobody likes the mirror. The mirror has to go, Greg. Get rid of the mirror. 
the mirror has to go and um, the rat. Nobody wants the rat. Where you at, rat? Look at that thing. That thing is nasty looking. Isn't that creepy? I don't know why I haven't thrown that thing outside. Honestly, I don't even want to touch it. I want to be in here with it, but I guess I'll try to grab something to pick it up with because that just adds to the creepy factor and I don't want that crap around me. There's some gear I have, um, the Panasonic 870 right there with the night vision, a little tripod stand. My fourth arrow camera mount that broke. This is like the third one that's broken on me already. The GoPro that can't see at nighttime, which is no good. Nobody wants a GoPro that can't see at night. You have to turn on that bright light. And nobody likes that. But yeah, let's, let's, let's have a look outside because I need this heavy feeling to be lifted off me. Greg said that whoever was staying here, he let somebody stay here. They trashed the place, and that's just the way it is, guys. So don't blame Greg. Greg's very clean, and um, you can tell he's a successful man, but supposedly they're supposed to come up here and haul this stuff off, So, or whoever owns it is supposed to come get their stuff, which Greg is nice to not just throw it all away, scrap everything, and say sorry. But wow, look at that man. Oh, what was that? <sighs> Let's just say that was a deer. Hello, deer. Hopefully not the upright kind of deer. But I kept thinking I was seeing something over here. In there. I don't know what it is, but thought something was in there earlier. This place is creepy. What are you? What's out here? Yeah, the moon looks cool. Mic check. All right, mic's still working. Sometimes the mic quits working. Sometimes the camera quits recording. Turn everything on, cool.
Stars are out tonight. Looks really cool. Hmm. We have movement to my right. Okay, there's definitely something there. You always get the feeling like something's watching you. But out here, it's like something's totally watching you. What are you? Now it's over here behind me. Come on, focus. For some reason, night vision is not working as well. This thing's making me walk back and forth. Is it a possum? A skunk? A coyote? I don't think anyone's done whoops out here, so maybe the whoops will work. Neighboring dogs have been going off like crazy. I guess the moon is like throwing things off. You ain't ever gonna focus on the moon, buddy. It's too far away. Yeah, look how weird that is. Moon? No? All right, so I was going to run this spare camera I have, turn on night vision, let it sit upstairs because I was hearing some noises, and now it's dead. I charged the whole battery. Weird, all my batteries keep dying. Don't know why my batteries are dying, but maybe because the cold or something's in here, but I heard a, a thump right there, and then a couple seconds later, a thump over there. So it was like, Boom. And I'm talking about a lot of thump, not just like a creak. Like, doom. So I can't say for sure if it was footsteps or what, but something weird's going on. So the only thing I have to rely on now, which I didn't want to do, is this thing. So 
We'll see what's going on. Wanted to run night vision upstairs. Hmm. I've never had it spike like that. Never. Never ever. Never have I had this thing spike like that. You guys have seen this on the channel before. I've never had it spike like that. Let's go back to this room, see what's going on. A weird smell in here. Never had that thing go up like that ever, even whenever I got it close to electronics. Look at that. Wow. This thing's off the charts, guys. I don't know what's going on. What? Serious? Hmm, that's why I get that weird feeling like something's on top of my chest. something was off and up there where he had the encounter that's where that thing's spiking at or if I'm even thinking of going up the stairs so upstairs is where the stuff's happening And this is where he saw the creature. Right here. I'm 
Well, I'll let you know. I'm not going to talk to you, but I'll let you know that you're not allowed to harm me. And God will punish you for the things that you have done. So go back to wherever you came from because you're not allowed to be here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Got it? I do not fear you, and nobody wants you here. Okay? So leave. And you're not more powerful than God. even higher up than before. So I'm down to the last bit of my battery and all my batteries are dying. So I'm gonna save one more battery for tomorrow. And then um, when we get to Jim's place at Lake of the Ozarks, I'm gonna charge up the rest of the batteries. But yeah, I'm getting a dark feeling in this place and it just doesn't feel right. I don't wanna stay here because what am I gonna do with no batteries? I know that, that sounds like chickening out but that may be so but I'm also not stupid so I've been around this stuff before and nothing good comes from it but yeah I did hear a footstep up there at the top of the stairs and then one up here which I don't know if it was a footstep and it sounded like outside like I was hearing things walking around and every time I'd look there wasn't an animal or anything so really hard to say but yeah I'm I'm not much into researching ghost entities and um, evil beings so it is what it is guys I'm gonna save my battery for doors upstairs just open like I looked behind me because I thought that door opened but it didn't But yeah, I just don't want any of this stuff to follow me home. You're not allowed to follow me home. Or anywhere. You stay here, whatever you are. Yeah, I'm going to get my stuff, pack it up in the truck. It's about 11 o'clock now, so maybe a little bit after. But yeah, I'm going to get my stuff together, get everything in the truck. I'm going to go back to Greg's place, and I'm going to sleep in a warm bed and do Bigfoot research tomorrow. we got a big interview to do, and um, I'd rather use my energy for that than stay here, be drained, and not make a good video tomorrow because tomorrow is the day I've been waiting for a long time to um, well, I shouldn't say a long time but I've been waiting a good while to finally meet up with Jim and Lori at Lake of the Ozarks and yeah I've just been thinking about that a lot I'd hate to waste all my energy here and yeah it does creep me out guys I don't want to stay here there's just something not right in this place and I don't want to wait to find out 
what it is. So I keep like I'm drawn to the upstairs and that's where the EMF was going crazy. But yeah. Let's go before something bad happens. All right, tune out, guys. See ya.